it might not seem like people write letters much these days with the smartphone and instant messaging taking over all the writing that people used to do. However, there are still people who write letters that live in small towns or don't have access to the internet. People write letters for all different kinds of things, and usually a handwritten letter is stressed to be very important when one takes the time. But letters are also written by scary people, too. People who want to terrorize, leave behind some mystery, or send a message to someone so they get the idea they mean business. And sometimes there's no return address on the letters, making them even more terrifying. Check out these five creepiest letters ever left behind. Before we begin, make sure you hit that subscribe button to get notified every day for more amazing content. With that being said, let's begin. Number 5. Circleville Writer Circleville, Ohio is a small town in America where everyone knows everyone else. It's one of those places where residents can leave the doors to their homes unlocked overnight without fear of anything bad happening. In fact, the town seems like the kind of place where big city citizens might actually turn to in order to get away from the chaos and commotion of big city life. However, in 1976, all of that changed as someone began a campaign of terror against the whole town with what is now called the Circleville Letters. The interesting thing is that everyone got letters with threats of violence and personal information about themselves that in many cases only the recipient of the letter would be aware of. The letters were hatefully written with plenty of vulgar language and lewd and nasty artwork. And of course, none of the letters had a return address on them. However, it was determined that they all appeared to come from somewhere within Columbus. Each letter was written in the same handwriting style with block letters, which experts said might have been an attempt to cover the author's own personal handwriting. Many of the town's 14,000 people who lived there were targeted, but one woman was seemingly singled out and received far more severe and harsh treatment in the letters. The woman's name, Mary Gillespie, drove a school bus and was among the first people targeted by the vicious and violent author. The Circleville writer started sending Mary letters and talking about an affair she was having and was threatened that she should stop or that the writer would go to a news station in town with the information. At first, she simply hid the letters and kept an eye on her activities, thinking that the stalker would be watching her every move. She did a good job of concealing her terror, until one day, one of the Circleville letters arrived addressed to her husband, Ron Gillespie. This letter was terrifying and ordered Ron to put an end to the affair or else. Mary admitted she had no idea what the letters were talking about. The writer continued to terrorize the couple until one day they suspected it was Ron's brother-in-law named Paul Freshor. The letter stopped for a little while. However, one day Ron picked up the telephone to answer a call. Mary says that she had no idea who it was or what was said, but the next thing she knew, her husband lost his temper and grabbed a pistol and left their house. But close to where they lived, Ron was involved in a fatal accident when his car hit a tree. His blood alcohol level was one and a half times the legal limit, but Ron never drank alcohol. Mary later found a poorly constructed booby trap with a gun in it. The trap didn't work and the gun was traced back to the brother-in-law who was tried for attempted murder. But while serving time, the letters continued and even Paul got one that said, Now when are you gonna believe that you aren't gonna get out of there? I told you two years ago, when we set them up, they stay up. Don't you listen at all, pretty spooky stuff. Number 4. The Mystery of Mel Wiley There's a story of a small town police chief that ended up missing from the small town of Hinckley, Ohio. His disappearance reads almost like a mystery novel, but this is based on a true story. Back in 1985, Mel Wiley's locked car was found by forest rangers in Edgewater Park, which is a lakeside picnic area which is also a swimming beach on Cleveland's highly populated west side. Rangers had no idea where Wiley was, so they kept the car under surveillance until the next day. When Wiley didn't show up, they broke into the car and found his beach towel, a set of clothes, his wallet, which contained $15 in his credit cards, and his badge and car keys. Everything was stacked neatly on the 
seat of the car. Rangers ended up scouring the park looking for Wiley, and the Cleveland Police Ports and Harbors Unit and even the Coast Guard searched Lake Erie for Wiley, but he was never found. There seemed to be no sign of foul play, but then again, there was no sign of Wiley either. Wiley was 47 years old and divorced with no children. Authorities and friends first said that it's possible he had drowned accidentally or committed suicide. However, as the days passed by, his body didn't surface anywhere. It then suddenly appeared that Wiley may have constructed some elaborate charade to cover his disappearance. The strange thing is that no one could understand why Wiley would do such a thing. One of the police detectives who worked with Wiley when he was a sheriff's deputy said that Wiley shunned the beach because he had radiation burns on his arms from the time he was in the army, which gave him a severe allergy to the sun. So the beach towel and the clothes with the car parked at the beach made absolutely no sense whatsoever. In fact, Wiley always wore long sleeve shirts in the summer. That same police detective became convinced that Wiley had perpetrated some kind of elaborate hoax. The detective found a one-use ribbon cartridge in the chief's office typewriter. The ribbon contained the imprint of a letter that Wiley had written to a woman who was his friend just two days before his disappearance. In his letter, he said that nothing in his life had worked out or even had the potential to work out. The letter also stated that by the time his friend received the letter, he would have put 2,500 miles between himself and Medina. The friend never did receive the original letter and Wiley was never found and to this day is missing without a trace. Number three, Granger Taylor case. Granger Taylor lived with his mother and his stepfather, Grace and Jim Taylor. Their home was on a farm in Duncan, British Columbia. Taylor was known as something of a prodigy or an eccentric genius, as one of his friends had said. He was very talented in the field of mechanics. There was nothing he could not fix or build. When he was 14 years old, he built a one-cylinder car from scratch. Just a few years after this, he was overhauling bulldozers and working on diesel locomotives. He even ended up building his own airplane. In fact, he was so smart that he dropped out of school in the eighth grade. He then went to work for a local mechanic, but soon quit his job. Taylor soon became obsessed with UFOs. He started searching for some key that would unlock the mystery of the UFO and alien sightings. He even built his own flying saucer and would spend hours inside the contraption wondering how he could travel the galaxy. In 1980, he let his friends know that he was on the road to success. He told his friends that one night, while he was laying in his home-built flying saucer, that aliens had made telepathic communication with him. The first thing he asked them was how their spaceships operated. They would only say that it was magnetic. He also said that the space visitors promised to come and pick him up for a guided tour of the cosmos and that they would give him the time and day when it would start. Of course, no one knew what to make of all this, and his friends thought that he couldn't possibly be telling the truth. It was November 28, 1980. He set his stepfather down for a serious talk and let him know he had been a great parent. Taylor then wrote out two wills and referred to himself only as departed rather than deceased. The next day, he wrote a note for his parents that said, I've gone away to walk aboard an alien spaceship as reoccurring dreams assured a 42 months interstellar voyage to explore the vast universe, then return. I'm leaving behind all of my possessions to you as I will no longer require the use of any. Please use the instructions in my will as a guide to help. Soon after, the 32-year-old Granger Taylor, along with his truck, disappeared. The question of what happened to him has never been answered. Number 2. Jay Rainwalker This is the story about a young boy who had a history of disciplinary problems among many other things and went missing in November of 2007. The boy had been in six different foster homes and never had a permanent place to call home. He had severe emotional problems and temper tantrums, which sometimes lasted for hours and frightened everyone around him, including the other children. This was probably due to the fact that his biological mother was an addict and an alcoholic. He was in a foster home and was adopted by a couple who had a lot of trouble with the child. The adoptive father couldn't handle the child and sent him to different homes. After being in trouble a lot and in and out of different foster homes, he ended up back with his adoptive family. However, the next morning, the adopted father 
father found a note. The note read, Dear everybody, I'm sorry for everything. I won't be a bother anymore. Goodbye, Jaylee Eck. And then the child disappeared without a trace and is still missing today. A big search went on with no results, and some people do not think that Jaylee Eck wrote the note, but that it was his foster father and there was foul play involved. But then, in 2008, another letter arrived at the home of the foster parents, which read, Jaylee Eck is still alive, needed a foot soldier for this war on drugs. Picked him up RT40 post 30. He's okay, no fake. He says his mama and papa, who are the Macaroni family, my cat named Diamond, why does Franti yell fire? Don't try to look, we are not there. While it's true the boy did not have a cat named Diamond, all the other stuff was unclear about their meaning. Jaliek has never been found. Number one, The Watcher. A New Jersey family that had just moved into their new home started to receive frightening letters from an unknown sender. The person sending the letters is only known as The Watcher and says that his family's been watching the house for three generations. The Watcher claims to be the rightful owner of the house and said it's been the subject of their family for decades. In one of the letters, The Watcher wrote, All of the windows and doors allow me to watch you and track you as you move through the house. I will watch and wait for the day. The young blood will be mine again. The Watcher started to threaten the family that they should move out or bad things will happen. While this sounds like something from a movie, the story's true. Currently, the owners are suing the previous owners of the home, claiming that they knew about the Watcher but never said anything. At the same time, those previous owners are saying that the family has made the letter so that they can get out of buying the home. Despite this, no one knows if the Watcher's real, but it looks like they got their wish. Hope you enjoyed the video, Top Fivers. If you haven't already, check out our other channel, Americano, to enjoy even more amazing list videos. There will be a link in the description, so check it out, as well as our